Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to look at general relativity. So let's get started. It says here that at higher level, Einstein's theory of special relativity was studied. It applies to motion in inertial or non-accelerating frames of reference. So you should remember from special relativity in the higher course that Einstein had two postulates, which were that the laws of physics are the same for all observers, and that the speed of light in a vacuum is the same for all observers. And remember special relativity led to things like time dilation and length contraction. It then says here that Einstein also developed a theory of general relativity which applies to non-inertial or accelerating frames of reference. So the difference between general relativity and special relativity is that general relativity considers frames of reference which are accelerating with respect to each other, whereas special relativity considers frames of reference which are not accelerating with respect to each other, i.e. one frame of reference would be moving at a constant speed or stationary with respect to the other frame of reference. Now to help you visualise something called the equivalence principle, I'm going to show show you an animation. So we're going to consider some thought experiments here and it says that twins Ada and Bertha are in identical space capsules with no view of outside. Ada is in outer space. So here we've got Ada in outer space and we've got Bertha on the surface of the planet. And if we click play here, it says here that the twins will feel the same effect on their feet. It is impossible for the twins to tell whether they are in the accelerating capsule or in the one stationary on the surface of the planet, provided they don't look outside. It then poses a question, so can they distinguish between these capsules by conducting an experiment? Well, let Ada and Bertha drop an identical ball in the same way. So if we click play here, we should see that. And it then goes on to say that the balls move in the same way. It turns out that there is no experiment that can distinguish between these two frames of reference. So going back to the notes now, this leads us to the idea of the equivalence principle. And it says here that the key concept of the general theory is the equivalence principle which states that gravity pulling in one direction is equivalent to acceleration in the other. If gravity is equivalent to acceleration, then it means that gravity, like motion, will affect time and space. Another way of saying this is that there is no way to distinguish between the effects on an observer of a uniform gravitational field and of a constant acceleration. So just like our thought experiment there, there's an example here that says, for example, someone dropping a ball in a spaceship in outer space, accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared, as in this case, will observe the same motion as someone dropping a ball on the Earth. So touching on this idea of gravity affecting time and space, it says that if you were on a very long spaceship which was accelerating, time would appear to slow down at the back of the spaceship compared to the front. Since acceleration is equivalent to gravity, time runs faster at higher altitudes and slower at lower altitudes. Or another way of saying this is that time runs slower in a stronger gravitational field. Now we've already seen that because of the equivalence principle, gravity will affect time and space. And a consequence of this is the curvature of space-time. So it says here that a massive object like a star warps time and space through its gravity. Einstein's theory of general relativity altered the definition of gravity from a force to a warping of space-time. So the larger the mass, the more space-time curvature takes place. And this is shown in the diagram here. So in the centre here, it says that a massive object like a planet or star curves the space-time around it and creates this sort of well. Far from the mass, space-time is nearly flat but close to it forms a well. And over here, objects like a moon sense the curvature and are drawn into the well. And we can think about this in terms of a rubber sheet analogy. So take space to be a stretched rubber sheet. When something heavy is placed on the sheet, the sheet will dip. And the diagram below illustrates this. So here we've got space as a rubber sheet, so this analogy. So here we've got a massive object causing the warping of space-time, and it's the case that the heavier the object, the deeper the resulting gravitational well. So the heavier that mass is, the deeper the gravitational well will be, and the more warping of space-time will occur. So we can conclude here that matter tells space how to curve, and that's what this first picture is representing here. We can also conclude, however, that curved space tells matter how to move, because once that large mass in the centre has caused the warping of space-time around it, then other masses passing nearer that larger mass and nearer the resulting gravitational well will be pulled in towards it. So in a sense, this matter that is already there tells the space how to curve around it. It then goes on to say that once we accept the curvature of space, it is easy to see that smaller objects will move along the straightest possible line that they can in that curved space. And just to help you visualise this, I'm going to show you an animation. So imagine we've got a large mass here in the centre causing a warping of space-time around it. And we've got our small mass over here which is going to be moving in towards it. So we can show the small mass moving at slow, medium or fast pace. 
So if we click play here for slow first of all, this is what it looks like. So the mass slowly spirals in towards the larger mass. And now if we look at medium pace, you can hopefully see that it's just continuing to move around our mass there. And then let's say the small mass here is moving at a fast pace, you'll notice that it doesn't actually fall into the well. So we can conclude from this that if our small masses are traveling slow enough, then they can be pulled in towards the gravitational well. So just to finish off this video, we're gonna look at some evidence for the warping of space-time. So we're going to look at some proof of this warping actually occurring. So the first one is gravitational time dilation. Where the force of gravity is weaker, time passes more quickly. But the opposite is also true, so where the force of gravity is stronger, time passes less quickly or slower. So because of this first statement, a clock on board an orbiting satellite goes faster than a clock on the Earth's surface, nearer the Earth's centre of mass. This has consequences for GPS. To achieve accuracy requirements, global positioning systems, i.e. GPS, use the principles of general relativity to correct satellites' atomic clocks. Clocks on board the satellites run about 42 nanoseconds per day faster due to the effects of general relativity, but also 7 nanoseconds per day slower due to the effects of special relativity. This means that overall the clocks are 35 nanoseconds per day faster and therefore need to be adjusted. So you might remember that at higher level we said that we need to correct for the effects of time dilation for satellites and this is why. The next one is gravitational lensing and it says here that if an object has sufficient mass it can cause light which is travelling in a straight line to bend. This is one of the ways in which black holes are detected. The picture below shows the simulated effect of a black hole as it passes in front of a distant galaxy. So you can see the light there which forms a sort of ring and that is the light bending there. The last one to mention is the precession of Mercury's orbit. So it says here that Mercury has an elliptical path around the Sun but it shifts slightly with each orbit. However, the amount predicted by Newtonian mechanics is only half of that actually observed. The precession fits in perfectly with that predicted by Einstein taking general relativity into account. Mercury's orbit has been altered due to the disturbance of space-time by the Sun's mass. So here you can see the shifting orbit of Mercury due to the Sun's mass. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.